Hello, and welcome to Trust and Transformation, the Entrust podcast. On the podcast, we explore the security and identity challenges of the digital transformation. I'm Ken Cadet of Entrust, and I'm here today with my colleagues, W.J. Bruin, Director of Business Development and Strategic Alliances for our Data Protection Solutions uh, in EMEA. Hi, Ken. It's great to be here. Thank you. Great to have you here. And on today's podcast, we're going to talk about digital signatures, standards and compliance measures that are bringing the legal signature into the digital world. How are a new kind of trust service providers making the process of signing and protecting documents easier and even more secure than paper? We're also going to talk about the new cloud signature consortium standards and how they are facilitating interoperability across devices and helping drive user adoption and better business outcomes. For answers to some of these questions, we're going to, we have two experts on hand. First, Mike Hathaway, Chief Technology Officer at Assertia, a provider of digital signature and time stamping solutions. Welcome, Mike. Again, great to be here. Thanks, Mike. And our second expert speaker is another colleague of mine, Robert Hahn, Director in Digital Security at Entrust, who has a long experience helping customers solve digital signing challenges. Welcome, Robert. Hi, Ken. Um, and let's just dive into it. And we'll start with Mike. Um, uh, we like to start the podcast with the big picture. Um, we know there are obvious differences between digital and traditional signatures, um, but maybe go beyond that a little bit. What are some of the benefits of digital signatures and uh, and what kind of benefits does it bring to users? Uh, sure, Ken. So I guess the most obvious, as we say, is a, a traditional signature is one where a person would make a their, their mark in a document, which is kind of used by everybody to uh, uh, agree to um, contractual terms, loan applications, et cetera, et cetera, um, versus a digital signature, which when created as part of a legal framework such as EIDAS in the, in the EU or the eSign Act in the US performs the same in the digital world. Cryptographic keys are generated, they're certified by a trust service provider and stored under the sole control of the end user. But there are some key differences. A document that's digitally signed is cryptographically, cryptographically hashed uh, and therefore cannot be altered after the digital signature has been applied without visibly breaking the signature. And, and that's often very uh, visible to somebody viewing the document in a reader. And two, unlike a traditional signature, digital signatures, uh, due to the way that keys are cryptographically generated and stored, uh, cannot easily be forged, unlike their analog counterparts. Hi, Robert. Uh what are the typical applications for digital signing and where do you see customer use cases for mass adoption? Well, um, <laughs> it's such a, um, such a long, long list. There are just so many. Um, traditionally, we always think of signatures as wet signatures. So really, if you look at any business process that you want to digitize, then digital signatures <clears throat> are certainly going to be part of that uh, process uh, to replace the wet signature, but, but obviously give it the, the equal or better legal standing. Um, but not a lot of people look at it from the digital perspective. So we, we, we all understand paper and wet signatures, but there are plenty of digital processes out there. There are digital businesses. Um, and they're looking for both the signature, but also the integrity and the, the authorizations in the process of, of a transaction or a, a consent or, or whatever to make it trustworthy and authentic. So, you know, in a nutshell, that covers almost any business um, that has either a paper process or a digital process. I guess if we think about mass adoption, um, you know, just within organizations, uh, we're seeing the most interest in the routine contractual type business activities, NDAs, electronic invoices, consumer supplier contracts, health and safety records, audits, and so on. And then I suppose on the consumer citizen side, it, it would be fair to say it's mostly driven by the financial um, transaction agreements, consents, um, approvals, but then you've also got the government sector and the government sector are widely adopting digital signatures for their citizens in the, the G to C interactions. And that could be anything from benefits claims, tax, 
local government um, interactions with their um, community. Um, really, it comes back to the need to have integrity, assurance, and authenticity in the process when you've either replaced paper or you've implemented something digital. Yeah, Robert, thank you very much. That is a very exciting uh, explanation. Hi, Mike. Who is playing an important role in providing these digital ser signature services and why? Thanks, Willem. Uh, so a, a, a key actor in all of this or a key entity is a trust service provider. And that's an entity that provides a collection of trust services that are involved with the creation, validation and preservation of electronic signatures, uh, electronic seals or digital certificates. Um, they act globally, so under a different uh, set of legal frameworks that are used to enroll and vet people or businesses for digital credentials. Uh, and these are used to enable use cases such as document or code signing, uh, website authentication and secure email. Other use cases do vary in different geographies. TSPs provide services beyond uh, issuance and management of these digital credentials. And you can include you know, things like signing services, workflow, long-term validation of documents, long-term validation of signatures, and even uh, cloud-based hardware protection of keys, etc. TSPs come in a variety of flavors, depending upon uh, the, the geography and the legal framework under which they're operating. So, for example, in the European Union, you would have a qualified trust service provider for issuing and managing EIDAS compliant uh, certificates and signatures. Or, uh, for example, an AATL provider operating uh, globally, uh, who would be responsible for issuing certificates that would be uh, compliant with the Adobe approved trustless program. Well, it makes sense. It seems like it, it seems like it would be a challenge to make sure that people just generally feel that sense of confidence and trust. You know, in a trust service provider, what are some of the technology challenges behind that? How do you make sure that signatures are qualified and compliant? Well, Ken, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, there are a variety of challenges involved, as as one would imagine. I mean, typically these challenges include verifying that a person or a business are who they claim to be. The industry has seen a huge increase in attacks on identity uh, and trust in a transaction ultimately comes from trust and integrity of the identity of the individual or business that's involved in the transaction. So for, for, for TSPs in particular at the moment, COVID has made face-to-face -face vetting absolutely impossible. And so ensuring you have the right tools to perform remote vetting or, or video-based video-based vetting or uh, checks on an, uh, on an organization to uh, ensure they are who they claim to be has, has proved very, very difficult. And there are continually, as with, the, as with these things, evolving standards that are currently under review to provide best practice and, and guidance in this area. Um, you know, smart card-based identities are also a challenge. Uh, they they're, you see them declining because uh, there are plenty of issues around the use and support of smart cards out there in the field, particularly in citizen-based deployments. And so TSPs need to not only think about the, vid the, well, the vetting and the enrollment side of the equation, but also about being able to provide uh, interoperability and remote authorized signatures. Yeah, it seems that the uh, concept of legally binding signatures has gained a lot of attention, and also with the help of the Cloud Signature Consortium standards. Can you tell us, Robert, more about this uh, standard and how it impacts the global market for trust service providers and their respective clients? Yeah, I'd be uh, I'd be very pleased to. Um, I mean, for me, the what the CSC, the Cloud Signature Consortium, did that really changed things. A real game changer was their creation of the remote signing protocol, um, which allows digital sig signatures to be created without hardware. Um, suddenly, or, or, you know, not quite overnight, but digital signatures became much more accessible, much more usable by people. You didn't have the reliance uh, for strong signatures. You didn't have the reliance on what you may say are maybe legacy technologies like smart cards or dongles. You know, our mobile phones don't have card readers or USB ports uh, for these things. So that remote signing protocol really changed the, uh, the ability for people to apply signatures 
on the devices they they want to use every every day um and that specification really is all about interoperability as well um and the beauty of interoperability and we see it in so many standards requirements industries etc is it allows for that adoption that uniform adoption across you know in this case a global market um but of course the the, the csc um it, do, it isn't standalone. In Europe, we've seen that the IDAS regulation has given it a legal underpinning, uh, and that's really accelerated um, digital signature adoption across Europe. Um, Mike mentioned earlier about trust service providers. We've got a huge and very broad base of TSPs in Europe, and, and it would be fair to say that other regions around the world are looking to replicate that trust, that legal model, um, to accelerate adoption, but but fundamentally, the standard it can work standalone. The CSE standard, if if adopted, can allow for that interoperability that's so crucial to adoption. Okay, um, I'd actually like to ask Mike uh, the same question. Mike, what's your view on the CSE standards and, and in particular how they might complement local regulations like the eSign Act or obviously EIDAS, like I said? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I agree 100% with you. Uh, CSC has been an excellent standard that helps to ensure interoperability between business applications or signing applications and a, and a back end trust service provider. We all know and acknowledge that vendors tend not to play particularly well on the interoperability front so this kind of provides a, a level playing field for, that, 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 that ensures and guarantees uh, high levels of interoperability the world over and so uh, you, you can you can easily see that uh, an EIDAS compliant trust service provider in Europe, an AATL provider uh, in uh, the Far East, or even an eSign provider in, in the US can all stand up uh, and expose signing services. And as long as a signing application is built to be CSC compliant, then, then you're guaranteed uh, interoperability. And that's crucial when, when offer, offering services on a global scale. You know, a, a TSP can, can provide digital signatures from a variety of different uh, legal frameworks the world over and, and guarantee uh, interoperability uh, the world round. So yeah, I, I think it's, it's very complementary, but ultimately uh, it's, its aim is to provide and ensure interoperability between vendors. Can you elaborate a little bit on the primary business outcomes customers are deriving from digital signatures? Yeah, in, in, in my experience, uh, most organizations are looking for the same outcomes. They, they all tend to have the same type of business challenges and these com companies are often large, they're geographically distributed with tens of thousands of internal users, external users, contractors and suppliers. Uh, and in most cases, they're all wishing uh, to digitize a paper-based process. So we, we've uh, a couple of um, customers that spring to mind where you know they're, they're performing in excess of 100,000 signatures a year they're using in excess of 50,000 sheets of paper so the instant uh, uh, business outcomes that they leap to when digitizing these processes are obviously business efficiencies uh, you know in digitizing a process you're able to make business go at a much faster rate uh, faster processing faster onboarding etc uh, are the immediate ones that spring to mind there are obviously cost savings to be made, so you're no longer uh, buying paper, printing, uh, posting documents. You you reduce the amount of travel if someone's having to visit you face to face to perform a, a wet signature on a document, and you're reducing uh, courier fees, etc. And then there are environmental impacts. So you know you're no longer consuming CO2, water, power, etc. In the production of paper. Wow, many great benefits. Uh, Robert, can you provide a customer example of the business outcomes I just described? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, I love these questions because <clears throat> talking about what actually happens, what customers can achieve, is probably the most important thing, rather than you know talking about standards and adoption and things. So. I mean, there are a number of drivers. Mike's covered a number of them. He, you know, the most common outcomes that we hear customers say is they became more efficient because the process is now digital. They've reduced their admin overhead. 
the speed of doing business is quicker. We've all learned that from being in in the uh, the lockdown situations. Things are happening much much faster, much more digitally, gaining approvals much quicker in more creative ways, um, and. And that really has led to competitive advantage for many, of course, because, you know, if you can do things quicker, more efficiently, then you're more profitable. You can invest more in marketing or you can satisfy a customer better. But the one I really like um, is a real real life example. And it, it, it plays to a number of things, cost cutting, customer satisfaction, but particularly what Mike mentioned about the environmental aspect. So we've got a banking customer that sells lots and lots of consumer loans and their traditional loan installment payment uh, created a paper based receipt. Um, and they operate in multiple markets around the world. Um, they introduced digital signatures alongside uh, an app um, that their customers can use, which their customers have been very receptive to the app and the, the easier way of interacting with the organization and managing their loan account. But the, the, the fact that really jumps out is that They've recently calculated that they now save 140 kilometers per month of paper by negating all those paper uh, receipts and changing them to a digital receipt that has authenticity, is digitally signed and so on, because it might have to get used for tax and reporting purposes. If you can imagine, the, the, the savings aren't just the paper, they are the storage costs, the archive costs, you know, add all that up and you've got a huge environmental benefit in this organization just from removing one piece of paper in the customer process. Wow, amazing, uh, Robert. That is a very, very uh, compelling uh, example. And uh, Mike, the pandemic and lockdowns must have accelerated implementation of these dig digital signature solutions. How do you see this playing out long term? Uh, yeah, it certainly has. I mean, the pandemic has certainly fast tracked remote working initiatives, cloud migration, digitization projects the world over. And, you know, I, I, I don't see any indication that organizations will be forcing people to return to the traditional ways of working. Um, I think the longer the longer term impacts on organizations are often more uh, they, they've, they've worked out that more can be achieved online. Uh, than ever before uh, and businesses have adapted well and will continue to support remote uh, distributed working and online servicing of use cases i don't i don't see i don't see this uh, remote working disappearing anytime soon yeah i totally agree i i, I think you're right the, the digital signatures are only going to grow um just because they're so much easier so much more useful and you know if you guys are making them more secure as well um you know that there's a lot of benefit to that clearly i uh, WJ, maybe uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, how we are helping to meet this demand. How are you know, Entrust and Assertia are, um, are, you know, our, our partners um, in projects like this? Uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about how that's working. That's a great question. And uh, as mentioned earlier, Assertia is a, is a large partner of Entrust for over the uh, many, many years. And we have successfully combined the technology of both companies. Uh, as well the expertise as well experience, uh, teaming up with, uh, with end customers on projects. And Assertia offers end-to-end -end solutions combining our basic interests, uh, cryptography and authentication solutions. And by doing that, that basically enhancing and providing the route of trust customers are looking for. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate how Assertia is driving innovation in, in, in the industry and helping customers transforming to an always on and digital way of doing business securely and aligned with compliance and legal standards. And we are basically looking forward to many more uh, years of successful cooperation. Thanks, Willem. Uh Let's wrap it up there, but before we go, we always wanna finish off with a couple of takeaways that our audience can bring back to their organizations. Uh, Mike, let's start with you. A couple key takeaways from this conversation you want to leave people with. Yeah, sure, Ken. So, uh, I mean, 
trust while transacting online is you know critical to the security of any transaction that you're performing so organizations and tsps have a key part to play in the ecosystem as it relates to identity and when you combine this with interoperability uh, standards legal frameworks you have all the key ingredients to making a successful digitization project and robert how about you we'll give you the last word well, thank you. And thanks to everyone who's uh, participated to this, um, especially to Mike. Uh, so I've got three things. Um, I, I, I can't say it's not a bad thing to be reminded of the differences of digital signatures to wet signatures. It's, it's not just a straight swap. There's, there's much more to it and there's much more uh, advantage with digital. Uh, signatures. Also, it's great to talk about how widely uh, this can apply to businesses. We've touched on a number of use cases, and they could apply to any business. Um, you know, whether they're using paper or they're centric on digital processing, digital signatures absolutely have a part to play. But uh, the thing I'd like to final, finally close on is it's great to promote the Cloud Signature Consortium. Um, you know, interoperability is absolutely crucial. I'd encourage everyone to go look at the CSC website, understand what they're doing, how they can help organizations, because signatures are between two people or two entities. So you need both parts to be interoperable. And that's what is, is crucial in, in global adoption. Well, thank you, Robert. Uh Thank you to Mike. Thanks, WJ. Uh, well, this has been a great conversation, and I hope everybody's uh, learned a little bit to take back to their uh, to their work. So uh, we hope you found it useful. Uh, watch this space for our next episode of Trust and Transformation. Thanks, everybody.